Uh, the crackdown on crypto in China it continues. Police in that country have arrested now more than a thousand people suspected of using the digital currency for money laundering. Joining us right now to talk crypto as well as the evolving U.S. China trade relationship under President Biden, NG7, is Bob Hormatz, managing director at uh, Tiedemann Advisors. He's a former vice chairman at Goldman Sachs, and he served five presidential administrations on trade relations. Bob, it's great to see you. I should also mention, and I believe this is true. You were the first, you were a U.S. Sherpa at the first G7 meeting, dare I age you, 47 years ago. Yes, that's true. The first, actually, for the first six, starting with Rambouillet in, uh, in, in France. Okay, so that you can good. provide a little bit of perspective. Let's, we'll get to G7 in just a minute, but let, let's just talk a little bit about what you think China is trying to do on the crypto front, because we've gotten lots of different mixed messages uh, there's, uh, you know, uh, a crackdown on mining on, on one side, and yet you have folks like Peter Thiel who think that China actually wants, uh, you know, to effectively push and support things like Bitcoin and other cryptos as a way of punishing the U.S. dollar. What do you think? Well, it, it is complicated because I'm not sure what the Chinese want themselves. I think it's the policy is in a period of evolution. Uh, the crackdown was an odd one because they cracked down on a lot of companies, they closed their websites, and then they put a number of them back up um, in a very short period of time. So I think there were a couple of reasons behind it. One, the market itself had gotten very frothy and with a lot of speculation and a lot of charges of misuse um, for moving money out of the country. And as you know, the Chinese are very concerned about large sums of money moving out of the country without some sort of government control or government notification. And a lot of people getting into this game who were not very experienced and causing uh, buyers to, uh, to buy things that they weren't uh, totally familiar with. So it pushed the prices up and made them more volatile and made it harder for the Chinese government, the People's Bank of China, to actually but, govern but movements of money. Well, that's what I was going to ask, Bob, though. I mean, crypto, unto, you know, if, if it works the way it's supposed to in many ways, it's supposed to be decentralized. So much of it is, at least. Well, Does that the, work you, in a country you, like China? You, you put your finger on it. They, they want two things. They want to have a very centralized system, but they also want to move ahead in crypto in part. And you pointed this out a moment ago. They're concerned about the dominance of the dollar, and they're concerned about the dominance of the dollar in particular as a use uh, for leverage, American leverage, on China and on other countries. So they would like to find some way around the dollar, um, both internally in, in East Asia and internationally. On the other hand, they want to have a certain amount of right. control over the currency and over currency movements and how people use it. And they don't want a lot of speculation because then the market drops and people lose money and right. the government gets blamed. Let me ask you a national security question. You know, one of the things we've seen now, and it's been a real switch even the last 12 months, Biden has revoked the, these Trump era uh, EOs, executive orders around TikTok and WeChat over national security concerns. And so the question I'd ask you is, were they, were they genuine national security concerns to begin with? Are they not? How should they be viewed? What, what's your take? My take is that this is really a temporary move. He's done two things. One, he's, as you say, revoked the executive orders, but he has now launched an investigation of a great many of the uh, Chinese software companies and companies in other countries as well and is going to come up with some criteria as to what he considers to be a threat to national security. So this is really, in a curious way, narrowing it by eliminating these two countries, companies, but also it's likely at the end of this review uh, to lead to a broadening right. of restrictions on a great many, or at least some uh, additional companies that he thinks provide information to the government of China about Americans, uh, provide information mm. that the United States does not want um, China to have, and and also right. uh, there are privacy issues that, that uh, he's going to be looking at. So it's a short-term narrowing, but probably a long-term broadening. Got it. 
Bob, final question, because we got to run. But if you uh, were the Sherpa uh, on this G7 trip, I don't know if you got to whisper to the president any advice back in those days. But if you did in these days, what would you be telling him? First of all, I tell him you still have to deal collectively with the pandemic with your allies. That's critically important to make sure the U.S. is is a leader and other countries as well. Second, to try to develop some degree of unity on how you deal with uh, the pressures from Russia, particularly in the cyber area. And three, to uh, try to at least narrow the differences between the United States and Europe on China. The, the US, U.S. takes a, a harder line on China. The Europeans who trade more with China don't want to get into a new Cold War with China, try to work that out. And also, talk a little bit more uh, as he would likes to about climate because there is this big climate meeting coming up. Those would be the, the major issues. And of course, since it is traditionally an economic summit, talk a little bit about inflation and are other countries seeing inflation, what we should do about it um, individually and collectively. And inflation is the big debate these days. And we're going to talk more about that later and, in the program. And, and Bob, and it's other great to see you. Have it. So everyone's got, got that's the thing. Maybe everybody's maybe everybody has inflation. Therefore, does it equal? I mean, this is sort of the MMT argument. If everybody has the same problem, maybe we all just inflate our inflate ourselves out. Uh, Bob, maybe. Well, that, that's going to be something that the, they'll talk. About. Yellen's already talked about it. And I'm, I'm sure since these summits have a tradition of talking about e of economics, inflation will have to come up and they'll have to at least get some right. common point of view. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.